morning, everyone. Absolutely hate these things, so we'll see how this progresses. Maybe I'll be lucky and the battery will die. Um, thanks very much for the... Thank you. Here we go. Thanks very much for the opportunity of sort of seems to be the formal section of discussions this morning. Um, we've been working on this project for the Endangered Wildlife Trust the last couple of years. Um, the project's titled Averting Extinction. Um, and it's been focused on conserving what is still South Africa's most threatened snake species, the Albany adder or Betis albanica. Um, Eloise and I, this is our first thicket forum, um, so I don't think we're very well known and there's always a bit of confusion about how we function within the EWT structure. So um, Eloise and I run our own ecological consultancy company called BioNerds. We've got over 20 years worth of experience within the conservation sphere. Pretty much focused on reserve management, uh, protected area expansion. Uh, we've become specialized in the last couple of years of finding new populations of range restricted or threatened species and then working towards uh, proclaiming those populations and developing management plans that work towards the um, long-term sustainability and persistence of them. Um, we have in the interim over the years worked out that teenagers are very good field hands and they are cheap, although by the time they get to 15 they've learned what minimum wage is and it doesn't work out so nicely anymore. And we have just brought a ridge back on hand as well, which we're hopefully going to be able to train to find Amatola toad for us um, as well. Um, so that's the team. Interestingly, the way that BioNerds started was we were trying to, we were seeing there's a lot of doom and gloom within conservation stories, typically. And we were trying to create awareness on social medias that you could still get out into your natural landscapes very close to home. And there was always something that you'd be able to see close by. We were sitting with gigabytes worth of uh, photographs that were just sitting on portable hard drives that we decided to get out there, uh, focusing on the smaller type of species that you would be able to find. And I had very, very recently got over a huge phobia of snakes. And um, the first snake species that I caught on my own in the Swartbath Mountains was then one of these little dwarf adder spe species, um, the one in the middle over there, red adder, uh, Betis rubida. And then we decided we were going to try and see all the dwarf adder species that occur within South Africa. So the one which is uh, close to where we were living at that time um, is the southern adder, Betis armata, which occurs on the um, Agullis Plain, um, no longer occurs around the Cape Peninsula. There are still isolated populations on the west coast. Uh, many horned adder, which is Western Cape through Northern Cape populations. Um, the most well-known, the horned adder, and then we started focusing on the really difficult species to find. So this little one over here, Plain Mountain Adder, that occurs Kompas Bad and uh, Snewberger. Um, when we went looking for that, there were only seven known records. Um, we managed to time it absolutely perfectly about two weeks after the last snowfalls within the area. Spring flush, it had just come the first time there'd been good sun. We found three of them within, um, within two days. So it was a very successful trip. And then one of the ones that we spent a lot of time with as well, searching for was the Albany Adder, uh, Betis albanica, of which there'd only been 11 records when we got involved um, in the entire history of the snake. And because we'd actually managed to find one when EWT needed someone to implement the project for them, uh, they contacted us and that's how our involvement with this inverting extinction project came about. Basically just herping around the country and having a jaw. So, just to give us an example, we work with a lot of NGOs, um, public benefit organizations and private conservation institutions across predominantly the Western Cape, Northern Cape and Eastern Cape provinces. Um, and a lot of the work that we do is with Endangered Wildlife Trust and that's what we're going to be focusing on. Uh, specifically the Endangered Wildlife Trust, and then this whole Albany Adder project has been funded by Rainforest Trust as well. So some of the projects that we do do for them, uh, threatened amphibian projects within the Western Cape, uh, Cabenza bufo, Coelanophus, which is an endangered species, critically endangered species such as the rough moss frog or Arthropteleragosa, 
and the micro frog um, on the Agalis Plain. We do work here in the Eastern Cape in the Amatola Mountains on the critically endangered Amatola toad and critically endangered and endangered butterfly species within the Western Cape province as well. Um, and then uh, we also do the development of protected area management plans for EWT on sites that are running through proclamation within biodiversity stewardship. Right, um, I'm going to touch on this one very briefly because it's got nothing to do with thickets, but it is provincially important and in terms of some of the comments we had this morning in terms of agriculture, it's a phenomenal success story. So, very, very quickly, because I know I'm going to run on a tangent here, but this was very likely to be the first extinct in the wild amphibian species within South Africa. Um, it was well known in the Hogsback area in the uh, 60s and 70s. Population numbers started dropping drastically in the 1980s with the um, advent of forestry plantations coming into that area. And then late 1980s, it wasn't seen again. Uh, red listing surveys through the, the early 2002 through to 2006. Lots of surveys in the area didn't turn up any um, of them. And there were discussions at the 2008 red listing of actually having it um, put through as possibly extinct or extinct in the wild. And a project, the EWT's Threatened Amphibian Project, actually birthed out of this work. And Interestingly, what we've seen is that the change, um, forestry definitely has a huge impact. Obviously, what we're seeing in terms of seep wetlands with the water utilization, but also the management of wetland systems as fire breaks, burning them on uh, a two-year cycle, and then putting grazing animals onto them automatically has completely degraded the wetland systems that they're reliant on. But the agricultural component has changed completely within the surrounding landscape. Sheep farming has been moved away from. We've got regenerative agriculture, which is high intensity grazing. We're sitting with a lot of pothole formations within peat wetlands, which is very suitable for them for breeding. And while we've lost populations over a 20 to 30 year period around the known localities, the Eelandsbach Mountains, Geikerskorp Mountains, where re farmers are practicing regenerative agriculture, we've seen populations increase within those areas. And are now putting through about 10,000 hectares to be proclaimed as nature reserves for the species. And we often get the question, what game are you going to reintroduce? We aren't. We're actually going to manage those areas so the, the ecosystem driver in those reserves will be cattle because we can herd them properly, we can move them actually within the areas which you can't do with game at all. So it's a very effective mechanism which works towards the conservation of the critically endangered species. But we're here to talk about snakes. <laughs> so just in terms of the Albany adder, same type of scenario. It was originally collected in 1937, north of Grahamstown, from a farm called Brockcliffe by Hewitt. And it just, like most of these things, sat on a jar um, and pickled away for many, many years. Until Bill Branch re-looked at the entire Cornuta Inonata complex, and he split a lot of species in the late 1990s. And Betus albanica was one of the dwarf adders that was split off the many-horned adder, the Betus cornuta complex. <coughs> so what you will find is that they've all got these scale-like protrusions above the eyes. And this one was um, described as occurring within the Albany um, thicket areas. It hadn't been seen basically since 1937. It wasn't seen again in the, the Brockworth areas after Hewitt collected it. Uh, there were populations that were known around the Nanaka area, that were known from Summerstrand, that were known from Kucha, with all the development in terms of urbanization, industrialization, and agricultural footprints increasing. Those hadn't been seen in more than 40 years, and the only known population that was then known was around the Bornfeld ecosystems on top of Grass Ridge, where the PPC mine is. So one of the first things that we had to look at in terms of the uh, species was Dominique Henry developed this um, survey system to be able to see whether or not we could actually find these type of cryptic species. So the study was the, uh, designed around this needles and haystacks estimating detection probability and occupancy of rare and cryptic snakes. And Eloise went out four times a year with these modeling transects where they were randomized transect within Bornfeld ecosystems where it would be a step point. If, um, with every step, you'd search um, undercover in grass, column, and everything like that. 
and it would be 100 meter transects in each of these areas and that was done four times per year. At the same time Aloise did these vegetation quality transects, those were actually grown up to 15 transects within the area as well, looking at vegetation cover, um, uh, soil openness, all of those type of components as well. What we learned is a lot about the absence of proof, is not a proof of absence. These snakes are incredibly cryptic, they are incredibly difficult to find, and um, it's part and parcel of one of the most difficult things of studying these species is it's near impossible to be able to find any of those species. In all of those transects on foot, we did not find one. Um, I'll give you an example, um, when Eloise and I started this project, we got up to 17 records. We now, on 50 records of the snake, we've had one of them on foot. All the rest of the records have either been dead on road or actually us road cruising them as well within the area. So it's a very, very difficult snake to be able to find in field. They only get to a big female 30 centimeters in size. So the opportunity of them disappearing into uh, grass tufts and the rest of it, it's near impossible to be able to track them down. 2018, the new uh, veg map came out and we had motherwell caroid thicket that came through. Um, into the PPC Grass Ridge area. So that's the um, portion of properties that are owned by PPC. Uh, that automatically came through the Karoid Thicket as a critically endangered ecosystem. And what we looked at was assessing the ecosystems to be able to take it through stewardship review and quantify what um, meeting of conservation targets there would be. And what we saw is that that Bornfeld area, which is very limestone driven up there, is a least concern ecosystem because most of its conservation target is tied up here in Addo Elephant National Park. When you come look at Bornfeld areas in Addo Elephant National Park, what we're doing is we're counting hectares towards conservation targets that very, very easily noticeable have got plow line scars, have got contour drainage. We're looking at old lands that have been counted as contribution towards ecosystem targets for what is that limestone habitat, incredibly diverse. Um, and it's a major issue that I've got with our red listing systems that they do not capture the state of vegetation that get quantified in protected areas, um, that it just becomes the natural distribution in these protected areas, automatically the hectares gets put into conservation targets, and what's outside, which might be in a much better condition, uh, then becomes opened up for development applications. Um, and the reality is, is that there's a lot of development applications coming to this area. So what we've already got is these red dots are the um, Albany Adda records that we've got through these areas. This is the hotspot area without a doubt. Um, the wind turbines are being favoured for the open Bornfeld habitat areas. So these red dots over here are the existing wind turbines in place at Grassridge. These orange ones, pink ones, purple ones, and blue ones are the ones coming within the next couple of years. The road is being upgraded between Motherwell and Addo. Um, we've managed to get the burrow pits, which are going to be, were going to be created in this area for that road upgrade to be moved down to these southern areas. Um, so PPC kindly automatically shifted the burrow pits. And we've got a hazardous waste facility that's coming through to be able to put through waste from um, that will be brought in at the Kucha port, will be transported up here. That's coming within the next 10 years or so. Um, and the snake already occurs on an area that is actively mined. So there's huge, huge issues that we've got in terms of securing this last known population. Right, so in terms of the value, it is bordering directly on some of the old step corridor networks. So, you know, the highlight in terms of those type of things, as Richard was saying yesterday, a lot of the work's come through. It's really important that we try and consolidate on it. Um, and we have found numerous threatened species over the years there. Uh, St. Carparico Vata is all through that area. Um, and numerous threatened uh, uh, euphorbia species, and we've extended the, the range of the Kukukopa and endangered butterfly species north into that area as well. We took it through to a biodiversity, um, or ECPTA's biodiversity stewardship program. We qualified as nature reserve in terms of the pure intrinsic biodiversity on site, but the question then came through is what precedent would be set by ECPTA if they declared an area with wind, wind turbines on it. We lost two years on policy discussions going back and forth on a national and provincial level 
before we've got the input now that we'll only be able to run through a protected environment on this on this level, which we lose inherently benefits, tax fiscal benefits that were very attractive to PPC and their board uh, in terms of science incentivization. Um, it would be a different story in my mind if we were pla planning to proclaim an area and then put wind turbines on it, but this would be proclaiming after the turbines are up, and it would come down to what are the reasons for proclamation. We know the turbines have been there for almost a 10-year period. We haven't lost snakes within that area. If we were looking at proclaiming a nature reserve with turbines next to a Cape Vulture colony, that would go against reasons for proclamation. You wouldn't want that to follow through. But in any event, we are moving towards getting that set up as a protected environment. And then, very, very importantly, during the... Um, the project, we got uh, a record from Addo Elephant National Park out towards Mboihi Loop. You can see we're now up to four records confirmed with an Addo. First, most important thing, of course, we've already now can confirm that they are within a protected area, which is wonderful. Second of all, we only knew of these snakes utilizing um, Bornfeld. It's a bit of a confirmation bias. It's near impossible to find them in Bornfart. You're not going to find them in Thicket. So all of those records in Addo are from roadkills. Um, but at least we know that they are utilizing this area. We've got a research project uh, permit in place to work with in Addo. Um, we worked with the section rangers. We worked with the um, field rangers, trained them how to identify the snakes and the rest of it. And the, the records in that keep coming through, which is absolutely wonderful. Um, Aloise also developed this toolkit, um, basically just to be able to go out uh, to landowners and the rest of it, uh, to be able to have a look at what are the confusing species, so egg eaters, rhombic night adders, puff adders, these are the species that often get confused, that the Albany adders, when we get pictures, it's generally one of those three, so we've put that through. Please, if you would like copies of this, and especially guys, the Shamwaris, the Kwandwes, the rest of it would be wonderful if we can get them out to your ranges and that. It's the easiest mechanism we've got to be able to pull and to be able to get a wider area. <coughs> this would be great to get more records coming in. Um, and then finally, we got the protected environment that's running in place with the negotiations with PPC. That will be linked towards a protected area management plan. Alien clearing, looking at the, the livestock grazing, because that is a major thing that we're seeing with all the surveys that were done, the surrounding PPC areas, where you're looking at game farms or um, sheep and goat farming. There was a huge impact, especially during the drought years in the Bornfeld ecosystems. PPC as a mining area didn't have the grazing pressure. The structure of the vegetation looked very good. And we do think that these snakes become very susceptible to predation, um, especially from um, crows or black harriers, jackal buzzards, those type of species that will be able to take them out in the area. Crane. Yeah, blue crane, all of those type of bird species. Um, so obviously the other component would be looking at the livestock grazing components. Um, so the management plan and then what we were able to do by confirming use of thicket and by um, the presence in the national park the AOO and the EOO extended quite drastically for the species. So in the latest red listing for the conservation status of the reptiles, in, we have managed to bring it down from a critically endangered species now to an endangered species. It still is South Africa's most threatened snake, but at least we are moving in the right direction. But there's a lot of tangible work that still needs to take place on the ground to ensure that we get those areas conserved and then we get the right management in place as well. Perfect. Thank you.